Here's your top five how to look at lots at Lake Martin. With Trey. With Paige. And Bob Hope. <laughs>
this is your spot. Hey guys, this is Trey with Crew Lending. We are getting so excited about the crawfish boil coming up. This will be our eighth or ninth year to do this. We started with about 30 of us uh, at a local real estate company just down the road. But then we moved it the second year to our parking lot and it has literally grown to be hundreds of people. And it's uh, past clients, current clients, our referral partners. Uh, we're just so excited to have you guys enjoy just a little taste of my heritage of South Louisiana. Uh, even though I've been here for 20 years and it feels like home here in Birmingham. So come join us. We would absolutely love to feed you and just kind of get to know you a little bit better. We are at Sunfest on the pontoon and we love Lake Martin. Right! Yay! So if you've worked already, you probably think you're going to have to give up one for the other, view or home. This house has it all. Enjoy a mile long view of the lovely Bay Point area. Enjoy the convenience of the Bay Pine Marina in your slough. You will have a parade of boats all at the no wake zone. And you may even have free live music on the occasional Saturday night. If you want peace and tranquility, this home offers that as well. It is a lovely four bedroom, three and a half bath, built in 2006. Enjoy gorgeous, gleaming, real hardwood floors and a traditional floor plan that includes an office and a formal dining room. The grounds are low maintenance, but very well kept. So have, again, the best of both worlds, a lovely yard, with little to no maintenance. Check it out, pagepatterson.com, and always like Love Lake Martin on Facebook. Okay, we have another famous <laughs> uh, <laughs> resident around Lake Martin that you have got to meet. This is Jake Ferkowitz. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's beautiful out here. Uh, Happy to be here. Yes. Okay. You've got a great story. We'll, we'll get into that in a second, but tell us what happened this morning with a good friend of yours. Yep. So uh, I moved down here, Alaska, uh, a few years ago and uh, raced sled dogs up there. And this morning, uh, a good friend of mine, Yor Olsum, just won the 2018 Iditarod, awesome. uh, which is kind of like the Super Bowl of dog sled racing. So pretty excited. He crossed the finish line at uh, 3 a.m. this morning. His first Iditarod win ever, actually his first sled dog win, uh, race win in Alaska ever. So uh, we're pretty excited. Awesome. Okay, and so you're pretty involved with the Iditarod. Tell us how all that crazy stuff started and yep. then how you ended up here from there. Yeah, I, uh, I'm actually retired from sled dog racing now. I still do, uh, NBC hires me every year. I fly up to Alaska, do a broadcast for them uh, for the live Iditarod start. The Iditarod's a thousand mile sled dog race across Alaska. Uh, basically starting in Anchorage, in um, Anchorage, Alaska, traveling up and over the Alaska Range, through the interior of Alaska, down the Yukon River, uh, finishing in Nome, Alaska, between about eight and nine days later for, for the winners. Um, the last time I finished I did a rod was in 2013. Um, I took eighth that year, uh, won the Humanitarian Award, uh, which is given, it only can be won by somebody in the top 20, given to the person that takes best care of their dogs. Um, so that's probably my most proud moment in the sport. Mm -hmm. uh, retired shortly after that. Um, my daughter was born um, August of that year and uh, August of that year and didn't really want to be traveling and racing all the time. Uh, ended up taking a job in Canada um, and then wanting to get her closer to her family down here, decided yeah. to move down here and uh, here we are living in beautiful uh, Alabama on Lake Martin. So literally, tell us about preparing for it and what it's like out yeah. there. Yeah, so uh, I lived in Big Lake, Alaska, which is like about an hour and a half northwest of Anchorage mm -hmm. um, and had anywhere between about 60 to 80 sled dogs. 
um, one of which my main leader is now retired here on Lake Martin, Pixie, um, who has also adjusted <laughs> to yes. Alabama life and loves it. Oh. Uh, as soon as it snowed this year, she ran right back inside <laughs> and wanted oh nothing to do with the snow. But uh, I had 60 to 80 dogs. Uh, we bred all of our own dogs. Um, so I, you know, picked the best dogs, bred them, and, you know, 60 days later we had puppies and we would raise them all from puppies. and. Um, every year we would do a lot of racing. Our, our summer season, we would usually spend doing tourism. Um, I spent a lot of summers living on a glacier where the only way in and out was by helicopter. Uh, so we would have anywhere between about 80 to 300 dogs on the glacier, living in tents and all the cruise boat people. Um, Alaska is the number one uh, cruise destination in the world right now. They would come up, they'd fly up, and we'd give them a little bit of a ride and it would make us some money. It would keep the dogs in shape. And then come September every year, we would start our training. We would run them on four wheelers. The dogs would actually be pulling the four wheelers. The, they would be on and in gear. So they'd be pulling against them. And then as soon as the snow flied, we would switch to sleds and we would start racing come December. And we would race all the way up to March, um, which is when the start of Iditarod is the first Saturday of March. Um, and we would typically, these dogs would typically have between about 4,000 to 6,000 miles on them yeah. every year that they would run. Every year. Uh, yep, every year they would run four to six thousand miles. Um, the oldest dog I ever finished I did a rod with was 13 years old. Um, their average lifespan is about 17 years old, so they live really long, really healthy lives. Um, you know, our food bill every year is about a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> for about that 60 to 80 okay. dog range. So uh, these dogs are treated incredibly well. They love their running life, and you know, Pixie is nine now here, so she's probably got another eight, nine years of living on Lake Martin. Jake. Okay, so the race starts, the big one. Yeah. A thousand miles. Yeah. I mean, okay, so how heavy is your pack? And yeah, so there's about 20 different checkpoints or villages along the way. So we've actually shipped out supplies um, throughout the race. Um, but it's not like NASCAR. We don't have a pit crew or anything like that. It's just me. We start the race with 16 dogs. Um, and it's just however fast you can reach the finish line. Um, usually, typically, in about nine days, which is when the front pack of us would finish the race, I would typically get about 18 to 20 hours of sleep over that nine-day period, broken up into about 45-minute increments. Uh, the dogs would obviously get a lot more sleep, but I was, you know, melting snow to make water to feed them. I was massaging them. I was putting their booties on and off. I'd go through about 2,000 dog booties throughout the race. So while they're sleeping, I was working for them. Um, so yeah, I mean, you're racing to Nome. You're running as long as possible, resting as short as possible uh, to get to the finish line. Along the way, you can drop dogs off at the villages or checkpoints. Um, just like marathon runners, not everyone finishes. Dogs are the same way. Um, you know, they might get a little bit tired or they might, you know, step in a hole weird. And then we would drop them and they get flown back by bush plane to Anchorage. Our handlers would pick them up and we'd go on with fewer dogs. So typically people will finish with around 10 or 11 dogs at the finish line while all the other, you know, the five or six other dogs are flown back home and they're already at their kennel. Um, I'm actually one of only six people that's ever finished with all 16 dogs. Oh. Um, I got a little bit lucky that year, um, but that's uh, some one of my proud moments in the race. But yeah, I mean, it's incredibly, it's a lot tougher on, on the musher, which is the person driving the sled, than it is the dogs. The dogs are built for this. Humans are not necessarily built to endure right. the middle of Alaska no. on 18 hours of sleep for a thousand miles. Do you see anybody else out there? Yeah, so, um, you know, we race with typically against 60 to 90 other teams. Um, so you're seeing teams, but I mean, sometimes you'll go, you know, a whole day without seeing anyone else out there. Sometimes you get into that little bubble. Um, some of the villages are bigger than others, anywhere from 20 people to 300 people. So you'll see people when you come in and out of the villages, but uh, it's a lot of solitude. It's a lot of thinking. It's a lot of thinking at three or four in the morning when you're trying to fall asleep and a lot of bad music that's trying to keep you up and a lot of sugar at two or three in the morning, but doing anything you can um, to stay awake. And yeah, you'll see some wildlife, the bear, everyone asks about the wildlife out there. Um, we don't have any encounters with the bears. They're all hibernating. Okay. Uh, moose are typically our biggest danger um, because, you know, on a deep snow year like they had this year in Alaska, the moose like to stay on the dog trail as well because it's a lot easier walking and they don't want to get off that trail and they can get stuck in the snow. So there's been countless stories of dog team versus moose encounters. Oh. And uh, that's the reason uh, a lot of us carry, um, 
you know, like a revolver with us or something like that. Uh, you can't use a normal pistol a lot of the time out there because how cold it is, some of that oil and everything can seize it up. So you got to do everything a little bit different in that type of extreme weather. Crazy. Yeah. You miss it? Uh, this was the first year I really didn't actually miss the racing aspect. I miss somewhat of the lifestyle, um, but I've been able to stay involved with it enough. Mm -hmm. um, who knows? I, I don't think, I think I will run one more I did run in you my do. life. Okay. Not competitively, but maybe with a puppy team just to take a young team. Every year I would always have, you know, my junior varsity team uh, race. So I might, I might run somebody else's puppy team one year and just go to Nome one more time and take a lot of rest and, you know, run really fast with all that extra rest and uh, just take in the scenery and get to Nome one more time. We will definitely follow <laughs> up with that. That is awesome. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Invest. <laughs> Sorry. There's a marina 20 seconds down the channel. No. Consensus. Oh, God. I've lost it. <laughs> yeah. You're good. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. It could be a fantastic weekend res uh, getaway. No. Nope. Look at lots at Lake Martin. Number one. No, with Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>